So our webinar today is going to cover, uh, it's titled Contra, a new view. It's, it's how we're utilizing cameras, image collection and artificial intelligence in combination uh, to kind of get a complete system view or a complete approach to, uh, to cameras uh, for, for varying uses uh, around hydrology and meteorological networks. My name is Charles Joost. I'm the uh, product manager of the Contrail suite of software, and I'm a uh, formally trained meteorologist, so I'll be coming at it from kind of multiple angles here. Um, but today we're going to be talking about and discussing how you can use cameras within your own system and uh, really get kind of that complete picture of, of everything that's that's going on today. Uh, for this webinar, uh, it is being recorded, uh, so if you're watching it in real time and you have a question about it, feel free to drop it within the uh, camera or the question box in the bottom right-hand corner of your, uh, of your dialog box there. Uh, I have it up, so I'll, I'll try to work it in as we go through the webinar today and uh, can fit that in. If not, uh, we will have time. I will stop the recording at the very end uh, and feel free to unmute yourself at that point and uh, ask your question. So with that, we'll go ahead and, and just jump right in and, and get started here. So when we think about uh, cameras in uh, monitoring network, uh, within a monitoring network, it really kind of starts at the very beginning. Um, so when we think about monitoring networks and understanding water level and rainfall and, and maybe wind speed and uh, all the kind of full met parameters, uh, sites and sensors are the most common way to detect environmental conditions. And that's um, a, a fairly obvious uh, statement here, but it's, it's, uh, it, it's worth setting the groundwork for the rest of the presentation that a, a well-maintained site, uh, regardless of its uh, sensor suite that's attached to it, um, as long as it's well-maintained, is typically very accurate and reliable. And we have, uh, as an industry, a lot of experience in designing around that. So uh, with that, we're able to um, adopt different telemetry methods and, and uh, provide different power uh, um, requirements um, to give us that environmental conditions, uh, what's going on at that site. Uh, we're often limited to what we can measure with those sensors, right? So um, if we're measuring water level, we can't get any other information about what's going on outside of just that single water level data point. Um, and this is the kind of the, the standard industry-wide approach for a wide variety of markets, including everything from flood warning and dam safety down to road weather, understanding meteorological conditions, uh, water management and low water crossings. This uh, traditional site and sensor approach um, is tried and true and, um, and is adopted uh, the world over in understanding what our environmental conditions are. One of the uh, main challenges of this, though, is uh, we're often driving decisions from a single data point. Now, we can have uh, the most accurate data point, right? That, that value that we get that we're going to uh, make a decision on whether to evacuate an apartment building or close a road or send someone out in the field to go open some gates. Um, it, it can be an accurate data point. Uh, but still, we're we're driving a decision from a, a single data point. And as an industry, we've gotten around that. Uh, we have uh, can supplement networks with uh, third-party data sources, uh, with derived data sources like radar rainfall or, um, or lightning data. Um, but still, we're, we're often limited to making decisions, sometimes very critical decisions, off of uh, what data point we received back. And uh, a really good example that we'll, we'll kind of come back to here, um, this is Bear County, Texas, the county that San Antonio is located in. And they have a number, a number of what's called low water crossings, where during a rainfall event, uh, water rises up and uh, floods a road. It's just um, in, in an ideal world, there would be a bridge there and you wouldn't even notice it. Uh, but in this case, they utilize a number of uh, gates and flashers to indicate to motorists that 
there's water on the road uh, as it doesn't take uh, a whole lot of water to have a car or a truck swept away. And in this case, there, there's uh, a, a creek here that, that goes right over a, a road here, especially when, it, when we get enough rainfall uh, and they have the two gates just uh, on either side of that road to indicate to motors, hey, don't, don't drive through this water, go ahead and drive around and find an alternate route. And we have a, a water level sensor that's located uh, about midway here that's telling both of those gates to, to open or close. So that's great for local motorists uh, to indicate to them. Uh, they are, they're there with their own eyes and, and often can see the water. But from a system administrator perspective, maybe we have had problems with this location. Maybe we want to send someone out to, to uh, actually put barrier gates out and uh, to set up uh, a, uh, or, or we might have to provide resources for a swift water rescue, depending on the exact uh, situation that we have. And if we look at the water level sensor, so zero feet here is actually the road level in this case. Uh, so anything above that is gonna, going to be on the road and is going to be an issue. And at about uh, a quarter of a foot, so about three inches, it's going to indicate to the motorist. And um, that's also our cue as a system administrator to, hey, there's an event going on here and we need to uh, go ahead and, and either deploy resources or, or just uh, take a deeper look at those conditions. And we can see where they're actually started uh, this past event that we're looking at here. They started with some water already on the road, uh, maybe an inch or two. And then uh, they had this bump. They started to get some rain upstream and uh, the site activated uh, a little before noon local time and uh, the, the gates became operational and uh, the system administrators were notified that, hey, there's an event going on here. Um, but before we get the rest of that event, uh, we don't really have any other indication of that event. Maybe the channel moved slightly or uh, the water level sensor became loose in its housing or or whatever the those impacts or, or potential scenarios are, we only get this one single data point uh, to, to drive decisions off of to either go close that road, maybe close the uh, gates ahead of time because we know it's trending upwards. We have no other context about what's going on. Um, maybe we have uh, debris on the road or down power lines. Um, we're, we're driving critical decisions off of this one single data point. And as you can see, as the event transpired uh, really quickly within the hour, it, it uh, peaked to almost a foot above road uh, height there and uh, became a, a real issue. And so this kind of brings us to our overall uh, point here. Um, they installed, they being Bear County, installed cameras at a number of these low water crossings to verify conditions, uh, both environmental conditions uh, to confirm the water level sensors, even though we do have redundant uh, water level sensors at this location just to confirm and uh, to also see if motorists are stuck and to um, provide additional context to just those those five or six data points that that came in from from out in the field. So this is what we're going to be focusing on today. Um, how can we use cameras to help supplement our network and really uh, use um, all the way from the hardware to artificial intelligence and uh, decision support tools to uh, be the most informed and make the, uh, the correct decisions as quickly as possible. So I'm gonna start with some, some, uh, some real kind of camera basics here. And um, you know, cameras for probably most of the people on this call, um, they either already have a network or are looking to grow a network um, of sites and sensors in um, recording environmental data out in the field. And so for most of us on this call, probably I would venture to guess all of us, um, cameras are simply a supplemental data source, right? We, we have our own network, uh, whether that's using uh, radio-based telemetry or cell-based or satellite, um, we have a network and cameras can serve as a way to supplement that network. Right. So whatever we're using that network for, um, the, the cameras can help be a supplemental data source. And cameras can tell a lot more about the site status um, than just a water level sensor. 
right? It can tell us if there's a down tree or a down power line. Um, it can tell you if uh, there's uh, debris on the road or uh, the road is starting to become eroded, maybe underneath, maybe the culvert uh, washed away or there's additional erosion on either side. Um, and it, it can tell you more about uh, the overall site status more than just what a single uh, water level or rain gauge or uh, full met suite can tell you. So it, it excels really well at confirming conditions, right? We've got that data point, but we can also pull up the camera image and verify, um, show the timeliness, maybe when an event started to occur, how that unfolded over time, uh, understanding other impacts that I discussed, uh, as well as confirming the operational na nature of whatever you're doing, right? If you're operating a dam, it can help to verify that a spillway is activated, that a gate uh, opened or closed appropriately, um, that my, uh, if you're looking at uh, low water crossings, that my flashers or my gate arms went down and no one's driving in the water. Um, it really excels at providing additional context about what your end objective is. Um, and so because of that, there is a, a real and important step within the overall framework of these networks that we, we need to embrace cameras and, and to uh, see how we can use that as a uh, supplemental source uh, for our for our network. And so with that, because it is such a, an important step uh, for us in the overall decision processing and uh, making sure we're we're making timely decisions, uh, we've we've kind of developed what we call a, a complete camera approach. And this is really how we view and think about cameras within a larger system. So the first little thing we'll talk about is, is camera hardware itself. We, we won't spend uh, any time on this really. This is just a, um, a couple things to consider about cameras because that will trickle down as we, as we go through our kind of complete camera uh, system and approach here. The second thing is image software. So uh, while the camera is actually taking the picture and sending it, we need something to, to receive that image and then serve it back up to a, a larger audience. You don't want the public or system admins connecting directly to your camera. Uh, so image software serves as that, that gateway for serving up images, understanding what's going on, uh, looking at time lapses and things like that. Um, and then there's machine learning uh, and artificial intelligence, right? Taking those images, understanding automatically without human intervention what's going on in those images, and then we can take appropriate actions or alarming or visualizations depending on uh, what objects are detected within that, that image. And then finally, we have decision support. This is what ties everything together, not just what the images uh, what, what the camera out in the field is recording and uh, maybe what the artificial intelligence is detecting, but also coupling it with uh, water level data or gate opening positions or uh, wind speed or visibility sensor data. Um, all of that information comes together in a unified approach for both uh, visualization, of all that data together, but also alarming, maybe after hours alarming and uh, quickly alerting um, the appropriate people um, that is needed for each one of those. So this is kind of our, our complete view. And um, we've, at, at one ring, we've been focused on this image software uh, piece over the last year or two. Um, that's been our focus, but we're proud to present today what we've been working on for the artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, within this overall framework. And so this is this is how we view cameras uh, supplementing networks and to helping to drive decisions um, that are appropriate and uh, respond to the environmental conditions. So with that, we'll, we're gonna go ahead and, and jump through each one of these. And then uh, the second half of the presentation we'll be discussing uh, and, and actually digging into what this looks like uh, within the application. Okay, so obviously everything starts with, with camera hardware. We, we can't continue on if we don't have something out in the field taking those pictures. Uh, so this is really, really important. 
Um, we we kind of consider from a hardware perspective, it's what takes the picture and then shoots it out. Uh, that is everything that encapsulates a a a, a, a camera hardware unit. And uh, there are lots of uh, options on the market for this, including uh, uh, within AEM, we have a number of uh, integrated solutions that both are standalone and can uh, and or integrate with other sensor data. Um, so we're, we're not gonna spend a, really any time on this, but I do wanna have, I have a list here of things to consider when you're uh, looking at hardware. Uh, the first one is, you want to start with what your end goal is, right? Oftentimes we see an agency will start it with, you know, for one reason, and then more more departments get involved and ends up uh, having a, a feature creep, and and you end up uh, having more needs out of the software. So there's nothing worse than trying to jam something in that's not designed to do that. And uh, and because of that, you you really want to start there, right? Do we need a picture every day, every five minutes? Um, does it need to be able to zoom in? Are we going to verify the integrity of a dam or see what the uh, road conditions are at a pass? Or is it just, you just want to know, hey, is, is this detention pond filled or not, right, uh, from a water resource management? And then from that, everything else kind of trickles down, right? So from that, you'll decide on uh, what camera needs you have. Uh, evaluate your power and data connectivity, right? Do you do you have cell connection? Is, is the power and data hardwired? Um, and then finally, you want to look at placement. Um, so, and, and that goes back to what your end goal is, right? You want to be able to, if you're wanting to verify whether water's on a road, maybe you position it uh, a little upstream to both verify water on the road and that your gates or, or flashers are down. Or if you want to check the integrity of the gate, dam as well as see if water's going down the spillway um, and see uh, conditions on the lake, you're going to want to be really considerate about where that camera physically sits within your larger ecosystem. So th those are just some, some things to think about, um, and that's not certainly an exhaustive list, but it's something that, sh that should be kind of top of mind when you're, when you're evaluating and thinking about hardware. So the next piece is, is image software, and uh, this is really the interface for viewing those images, right? So this is what's going to collect those images that are coming in from all the different cameras. Uh, we're going to store it in a cache so you can go back after the event and download images or look at time lapses. Uh, it's going to be a rolling buffer of all the images that have been sent out. Uh, an API to serve up those images. So whether you're uh, using it for decision support or providing it out to the public, uh, you need to have an API to serve up those images for websites or um, or public notifications or social media. You're also going to look at uh, movies and time lapses to understand the timing of event, uh, to see how things are evolving. Um, if there's a downstream uh, sliding of an earthen dam, you're going to look at that over time. So movies and time lapses are a great way to, to understanding the timeliness of an event um, and then being able to download the images uh, for maybe a post-event report or making your own movie or corresponding everything with the, with the gauge data. So this is uh, really where our, our software sits currently. Um, so this is our control camera software suite that we're gonna be showing here today. And this is really kind of the, the meat and potatoes of, of uh, what we have been doing and uh, really where we focused on uh, as one rain um, to provide the most value to, to the agencies that we support. So the next piece is uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence. Really at its core, you can think of it as object detection, right? We wanna know if a picture of, uh, if when we get that image, uh, what objects are in that image and if certain things trigger us um, to do something, then we need to know if, if that object is in it. So we have a number of challenges as an industry, right? The, the number of cameras that are being used are growing dramatically. Uh, especially within uh, hyd uh, hydrologic networks. Uh, we're starting to see some agencies go uh, 30, 40, 50 plus cameras being installed out in the field. Um, so the number of cameras are growing and because of that, um, it gets really hard to evaluate every image that comes in, right? So you can have a, um, 
a uh, either both in frequency, right? If you're pushing every five minutes, every one minute, every 15 minutes, uh, it's really hard for system administrators to be constantly watching that on top of doing everything else that they have. Uh, as well as if you have a really flashy system, off peak hours can uh, can be a, a real challenge and present a number of um, issues that that you have to overcome. And so that's really where uh, kind of as of right now object detection sits, right? So we want to be able to uh, monitor those images, uh, but do it in an automated fashion that we don't have to have someone looking at every image. We also want to be smart with it. And we'll, we'll talk about that here in just a second when we get to uh, decision support. So how does uh, the kind of a official uh, formal name is uh, convolutional neural networks. Um, that is the uh, behind the scenes actual name of all of this. And I won't go through this, uh, but there's a, a lot of research going on and a lot of really active development even outside of the uh, environmental monitoring industry. Um, this is being used from people's smartphones all the way down to uh, security and, and the government looking at this. So it really starts with an image. We're going to do some, uh, we're going to crop it and rotate it and do all sorts of things to the image, try to detect features within that image. And then features make up uh, objects at the end. So that's just, this is the classification that comes out of it, right? So we take a look at this image as X amount of features. We think it's a bird. Um, and um, uh, some other features that might come up based on coloring or, or whether there's feathers or hair or fur, I uh, might consider it as a sunset or a dog or a cat, right? So we're going to look at the features within it and extract those. And then from that, we can use a neural network to decide whether it's um, what type of object is located within that picture. So that is that is about as deep as we're going to get today on that. Um, but from this, we get a really great image detection and classification. So we can look at an image, run it through our neural network, and then get uh, a, a classification out of that. Um, and it's great for detecting those objects within uh, that single image. Um, and then we're going to, based on that, look at those features and, and get a, um, a percentage confidence. That's uh, about the most appropriate way to describe it. But you can see here on the right-hand side, uh, once the image goes through the neural network, it, it detects that a person is present and it gets, based on the, the feature set that it detects, gives it a confidence of about 92.5% that there is a person um, detected within that. So how does how does this fit within our, our kind of, um, you know, it, it's great to see that a person's there, but how do, we, how do we work this in within our larger network? So we are gonna kind of focus on here a, a dam, dam security example. Um, so let's just take that same image that we're looking at Let's pretend that this is a dam and we, we close it after hours and on the weekends and we don't want anybody on this earthen dam here. Um, so we're going to take an image and if we see somebody uh, or once we receive that image, we're going to pass it through um, our control camera vision uh, modeling that we have. It's going to uh, run through that, that feature set and come out with um, a list of objects that it thinks it's found and with confidence intervals associated with that. So in this case, uh, we're, we're found, I think we found a person, we're about 87% confident. And, um, you know, in, in the real world, you know, when you look at your phone and it has object detection, this is about where it stops. But what we as, um, with Contra, what we're wanting to do is, all right, let's take that data um, and supplement it with everything else we know and uh, try to be smart with this. So we then can plug that in and say, hey, if the time is greater than 5 p.m., so we know we're after hours and there's someone's there uh, that shouldn't be there on that dam, go ahead and, and send an alert. So you as the person can log in and verify and take a look to see if you need to take actions. And so from that, we can, we can kind of start to build a, a larger um, usage case for this type of technology within that larger flow, right? Because the number of images that are being generated is going to increase drastically um, and the the burden of the system admin is to look at those 
we're going to leverage this machine learning and object detection more and more so we can start to um, start to uh, proactively look when we need to. So some some common examples that uh, we we're already starting to see in in our in our testing is maybe detecting an Im immobile car that is there from flooding, right? So this is uh, the Bear County system that we were showing. This is a different low water crossing. You can see water's already rising on on the the road there, getting close to about a foot, and we could see this uh, tan car is actually uh, not able to move and the, the object detection is picking that up it knows that there's someone there um, and we need to get someone out there to assist in it maybe verify that no one uh, had any complications from that uh, we already walked through the activity on a dam uh, but we can also do it for a wide variety of other usage cases right is someone driving around the gates that we have do we need to send resources out there um, because they're, they drove back and we haven't seen them since. Let's go ahead and alert the Swift Water Rescue Team. Um, maybe you're operating a dam and you want to know if a spillway has been activated or not, right? It's often very much a challenge with dam safety and dam safety applications, or just verifying your surroundings for a particular flooded area, um, or if you're maybe you're operating a dam and you want to know if there's boats in your area before you make a release, either up or downstream. Um, these are all things that we can start to build um, automatic detection and alarming from uh, using our, our object detection. So that's, um, that's, that's what we've really been focusing on. Um, and we're going to walk through a demo here in, in just a second. Um, but this object detection um, is, is the latest offering within our control camera suite. It is called uh, control camera vision. So being able to detect objects uh, within an image and being automatically notified um, of, of those objects when certain criteria is met. And then lastly, we have our uh, decision support tool. Uh, and this is really a combination of not only this entire approach of uh, camera hardware, image software, and artificial intelligence, but it's really a, a combination of everything else on top of it, right? So most people are already doing some sort of um, operation with this. Um, and this is uh, commonly done through dashboards within, con within Contro, synthetic sensors, things like that, uh, and alarming. Um, but what we can do, we can now bring in that kind of complete camera view into the overall systems, all right? So we can see um, not only what the camera's reporting, but also, hey, what are the sites and sensors doing, right? Are we are we exceeding our, our flooding threshold? Are we um, um, rising above an area? Maybe we wanna start having the camera take uh, images more often. Um, and all this combines into a single view of both uh, data and images you're collecting, but also supplemental and derived data sets like radar rainfall and uh, lightning data and satellite and, and model data and, and everything else coming together in one spot um, to, to get that complete system view of everything that's, that's going on. So with that, we'll go ahead and uh, just jump right into the demonstration and uh, go over what we've been, what the team has been working on uh, and, and start to review that. Go ahead and exit out here. All right, hopefully everybody can see my screen here. And um, so right now we're on the control camera application itself. And we're gonna give kind of a, a brief overview of this for those that uh, either haven't seen it or are seeing it for the first time maybe those that uh, maybe saw it initially and, and haven't seen it since. So we're gonna walk through the control camera application, review uh, vision and what that looks like, um, object detection within the software. And then finally, we're gonna pull all of that together in uh, through uh, our, our larger application control to see what that, that looks like. All right, so I've, I've already logged in. We're gonna be looking at the Bear County system today. Um, and and looking at their um, some of their images, they've they've had uh, a couple events uh, as I pointed out previously, and we're going to be looking at that. So first off, uh, 
it, instead of calling things sites like we do in the main control application, call things cameras, and each camera is a location and a specific view. Um, so we, wherever the camera points, that is what we call a camera. Um, and so we have a couple different ways we can look at um, look at this. We have uh, first off a map. These all the blue locations show uh, areas where we have a camera installed, um, or Bear County has a camera installed, and where they're they're looking at. So you can get kind of sense spatially here what's going on. And then down below that we have a, uh, a quick scroll through that shows all the different locations. So not uncommon to have this view up on a up on a big monitor. We can also do the same thing. Uh, look at that same slideshow and just have just the slideshow. Uh, we can also look at it from a mosaic perspective. So if you want to look at it um, and see all of the camera images right on top of each other, you can do that. Pull it up in uh, full screen mode and and see what that looks like. And then finally, we have a list view that just shows what all of those um, different cameras are in, uh, in a list view, and then as well as a, a tile view. So that's that's kind of the basics of uh, kind of that system level view. Uh, we'll come back to that here in a second. So I'm gonna jump back home and uh, actually I'm gonna, I, I will go back to that, that same camera list here. Well, let's go ahead and click on this uh, Grossenbacher Road uh, just north of US 90 in San Antonio. So when we click on that, we get, um, when we click on the actual camera, we get uh, the most recent image, uh, full screen here. You can make it even bigger on your monitor. And then down at the bottom, we have some things, uh, including the Alert 2 site ID and where it's exactly where it's located within the, within the larger um, world. We can look at a time lapse. Uh, so this streams all of the most recent camera images uh, over a particular areas. So you can see they actually did get some recent rainfall in the last 24 hours. Um, and as it gets in the nighttime here, you can see it does have infrared sensors, but we get some infrared bounce back there. This is a great way to see how an event um, in kind of real time is transpiring and to see uh, you know water level rise or, or fall or um, to see snow melt occur, things like that. So that's the time lapse view. Then we have uh, movies. So uh, we, in the background, we we run a movie generator, and uh, it automatically stitches up. You can think of it uh, a little bit like uh, the time lapse, but uh, just as any other movie player, you can go back in time and look at a particular event. So we're going to go ahead and click on this. Um, this May 1st event when they had some rainfall, you can see in the early mornings, already had some water on the road. We saw that with the data. Uh, and then we got some, some raining upstream. We have that stalled motorist that, that uh, was stuck on the road and then the water starts uh, to recede just as, recede just as uh, nighttime hits. So we can go back and look at any of those particular uh, days. We keep a, in this case, a, a 60 day history of all the movies. Um, so you can you can quickly stream and watch it. Um, there's also a download button. So if you do want to um, send that out to another agencies um, to look at or embed it in a PowerPoint or do anything like that, you can you can download the uh, the movie right there. Uh, and then finally, we have the actual images tab. And this is where uh, I mentioned what's in, critical for image software. We want to receive every image and we want to keep it every image over a set amount of time that's going to be a rolling um, a, a rolling buffer or cache that that has all those images so you can see every image that was sent to the, the control camera software is uh, is collected and stored here so if there was a particular time that you wanted to look at you can jump in and, and see a quick view of that there's also a date time picker so you can go back to a particular event. Let's go ahead and pull up the first here and then do our end time as the second. And we'll let that load and then we'll automatically pull up all the images that were collected about 10 days ago over that uh, May 1st and 2nd uh, event that they had. We can scroll down as we get overnight here. We can see some of those, uh, those images that have the flooding and um, and we can kind of quickly jump around. Okay, when exactly did this car stall? It looks like uh, right at the height of the water, this this motorist tried to to drive through it. A, a very dangerous situation. 
uh, for this motorist to be to be driving through uh, and and looking at that. So uh, that's looking at each individual image. So great to you know verify maybe the exact start time of an event. Uh, you know when when something occurred, when the first uh, um, you know when it first kind of first became impassable or when that car got stuck. Great great to go back and look at each individual image. There's also a download button. So if you have a report or you want to save this series of photos. Um, to document, maybe it's a particular strong event and you want to keep those images. Um, in this case, we, we have either a seven day or 60 day rolling um, cache of images. And uh, if you do wanna keep it outside that, that time period, you can click the download button here and download that locally to, to your machine. So that is um, that is the control camera system as, as we, uh, Kind of discussed formally here over the last year or two. We do have other things like a, a map so you can quickly kind of see where it is spatially and see maybe how an event is unfolding within the Contro camera application. And then we have uh, our API as well too. So if you're serving up images for maybe a corporate website or integration within a, a third-party software platform, um, this is where you would define those APIs um, and you can do things like transformation and um, uh, get metadata about the images, uh, but also do cropping and overlay um, uh, timestamps and things like that. So a, a really full featured API that shows uh, what all those calls are and you can kind of quickly, quickly jump in and see the exact call that, that you would want. And then uh, finally, all of these, uh, all this functionality is kind of within that second um, step, if you will, of the image collection software. The team has uh, really been working very hard within um, within the last uh, 12 months, 18 months, to add in object detection and to bring that machine learning and artificial intelligence within the larger framework. So the, the first thing, um, how, how you would configure this or set this up is uh, you need to have, there's a particular license that has this object detection. It's called our, our vision tier. This allows you to be able to add in cameras that, that uh, you can run models against. So the first step is you would go to the cameras tab within the software. You would select whatever, whatever cameras of interest. And then down at the bottom, we have our models uh, area now so you can you can add in um, we have our standard model um, but there's if there's a different model that works for you or is a little bit better at detecting objects uh, in your area or your usage case this is more of a framework that we can add in other object detection models um, within our processing and framework and so what happens to that so let's go ahead and jump to this camera now and uh, let's go ahead and click on that that same uh, Rosenbacher Road here. And let's go back to the that image timeline and select the first. And we'll do the second as well too here. And uh, we can see, we scroll down and go to that that same event again. When we click on these images, we I did the the quick view here. Uh, but when we click on these images, um, you can actually go directly to the, the image um, itself, and there's an image page. And you can see now we have blue boxes around um, on the image. And we'll get to that in, in just one second. But you can see down at the bottom, we now have a label section. These are, this is what we call labels, is what the uh, machine learning is picking up within the object. So we can see things, there's uh, there's some cars in the picture, 98% confidence, it detects a tree and some wheels and a truck. I'm gonna turn off the wheel and the tree here. And if we go back up to the top, you can see we have bounding boxes over those uh, two cars and a truck here. Um, so it's, it's picking up, um, in this case, during these flooding conditions, that hey, there is a car present, 98.1% confidence. Same thing with the car here, uh, and the, it's considering this a, a land vehicle car, uh, but it also has a, 
a, a truck label with it uh, as well too. So this is showing up right within the, the control camera um, ecosystem. And this is uh, where you would visualize and, and see those results that are being populated. Um, it, if someone is looking at this, obviously they know that there's a car there, uh, a handful of cars and, and flooding and, and some trees in the picture. So this is really just uh, to verify the results uh, for you and to make sure that uh, things are working properly and we'll get to what we can do with that with that data um, in a second. So that is that is uh, each image that is collected is is sent through this model. In this case, there's uh, we have a particular object detection model that's running, and um, and with pretty low latency, we can we can pick up what those objects are in those images and what the confidence level is. So the results actually. Um, is while this is great to visualize the result and what we're going to do with it um, is actually more important and more more interesting. So let's go and uh, dig into that and see how it can fit within the larger decision support uh, uh, process. So I'm going to click on the first one here. Um, we've always had um, actions in the sense of hey, let me know if if I haven't received an image in X amount of time or or we've received too many images and we need to go out, we don't wanna um, exceed our, our data bill. Uh, but we now have um, actions within our models. Uh, so in this case, we have a, a CNN uh, open images model. And with this, we have actions. Um, so we don't have any actions defined here, but this is how we're gonna really interact with the data and do something with the data. Um, so we're, we're gonna select a camera up at the top and just select this first one and then the default model that's defined here. You're gonna give it a name, right? So you're gonna to wanna to define what this action is. And then down at the bottom, this is where, where we really interact with that data and derive value out of that. So we're gonna to wanna to look at, you can select any number of minutes here, uh, looking back over those results. And let's just say you're you're in charge of this low water crossing and you wanna know if there is a car within the picture. And I wanna know if the total count of cars in the picture is uh, greater than zero. So this will, what this will do is that, that feature set that gets returned back, the actual underlying data, it will let us know if it sees a car in the picture um, in this case, because we want to know if there's more than zero. Um, you can do things like, um, let me know if the average score or maximum score is above a certain amount or within a certain range. And what we do with that data now is we can pump it into an action, right? So the condition is kind of um, what condition you want to do something on. And then the action is where we're going to push that data. In this case, what we ultimately want to do is get the data back into Contro. That's where all our site and sensor data is. That's where our third-party data, like uh, gauge adjusted rate of rainfall and lightning and model results, all of that is within the main Contro camera application. We want to get that data back in there so we can use it for alarming and visualization and, and sensors. So in this case, we uh, set up the your API host, uh, set up, give it a port and a system key. We'll talk about that in, in just a second. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a site that is, um, in this case, the uh, Lavernia um, camera site. Um, it's going to be a synthetic site within the larger system. We're going to give it a a sensor ID that's going to receive that data point. And in this case, it's going to send the car count, the number of cars it thinks it sees uh, over a certain, uh, over the last 60 minutes. And that data is going to show up right within Contro. So that, that's about as far as I want to go uh, getting into these actions. I don't want to spend a ton of time on this because uh, we do want to see what the end result looks like. But know that we have a lot of flexibility that whatever is in, important to your mission or important to your operations, um, we can craft things and, and just, you know, display, hey, let me know if there's sees a person or sees a car or truck or uh, sees water or whatever it is. We can create and craft a, um, a condition and, and corresponding action to push that data back into Contra. Okay, so what does that look like? 
So we're going to uh, we're going to jump to uh, this is our demonstration version of Contro. We're going to jump to the admin side of the software and go to the systems. And this is where we're going to receive the actual data. So down at the bottom here, we have a, a test vision data that the that the team set up. And what this is doing is uh, we have a system that is being received from the API. And anytime those that uh, neural network or AI sees a car, it's going to push out that data point uh, to our, our system. Um, in this case, we have a, a one rain office site that has um, the those sensors defined. So in this case, uh, uh, it's purely demonstration, but we're, we're interested in knowing uh, the total number of cars it sees, uh, what the confidence is of that that car total um, and then whether it sees anybody within it and you can see it shows up just like any other data point now right doesn't usually see people uh, it often sees cars um, in this case is our main parking lot behind the our office building uh, and so we can we can do all sorts of things with this now right it's just like any other any other data point within soft within control right we can look at the actual data and see time of day. Um, you know, there's upwards of 28 cars right now. Overnight, there's not as many cars, and during the day, sales still the same amount of uh, cars that it sees. So, what can we do? We can write alarms with this data now. Let's go ahead and jump to rules here. Click add. I'm going to change our system to the uh, control vision test that we were just looking at. Um, but this would be uh, really anything that that you would define. In this case, we want to know if the the total car um, count, not county here. Um, we want to know, hey, is is uh, the car count? I just wrote county because I said county. Uh, you want to know if the the last value, if we see more than zero, right? I want to know if I see any cars within that image that it's receiving. Um, so anytime there's an image that comes in and sees a car, it pushes a data point. That's more than zero, pushes the data point to control. Now I can get um, an alarm of, of that data. Now the powerful thing though with it is, that's that's great to know if a, if a car is located in our back parking lot, uh, but we can also tie this in with sensor data, which is uh, the most important thing, right? If you're operating that low water crossing, you're responsible for that, it's a street. You don't care if there's cars on it. You only care if there's cars on it and there's flooding. That is that is the uh, uh, the the kind of entire premise of that, and more importantly, you want to be notified if you're not looking if there's flooding conditions and there's a car present, there's a car stalled within the system. So in that case, uh, we're going to do an and because we want to know if there's a car and it's flooding, and we do just like uh, we do in our alarm module that we've we've spent a lot of time talking about. Let me know if the last value of, let's just say, our water level site is 1.4 and the water level sensor number is 4. Let me know if that water level is greater than 0 0.25 feet. So when this alarm triggers in the middle of the night because there's flooding on the road and there's a car, you can define what your delivery is. This can be outside of your flooding conditions alarm. You can have your own separate camera alarms or you can integrate it in um and and input hey when you get a flooding alarm go ahead and let me know if there's any cars stuck there um because we need to go out and, and do something so you you can start to see how we can craft our after hours or understanding what's going on across all of our cameras pretty quickly right we can say let me know if the car counts above x the person counts above y um and then let me know if there's flooding conditions go ahead and send me an alert to these five people um, maybe also alert our swift water rescue. We also can embed that appropriate image as well too uh, within the delivery. So that's looking at alarms uh, with the data. Uh, probably one of the most common usage cases of this um, this next step, uh, um, artificial intelligence and looking at uh, different objects that are being detected um, within the image. We can also look at and embed and, and create synthetic sensors as well, too. So we can uh, take that data that we're collecting with the flooding data, and you can come up with your own site status alarms that maybe take into account what those images are. Um, and you can also look at 
um, and maybe make a uh, alarming thresholds or best guesses of what's going on at these different locations. So the last thing that I just wanted to touch on is, is how this all kind of ties together, right? We talked about alarming. What are some other visualization or things that we can look at? So we've we've uh, had a, uh, some initial um, widgets with our camera uh, software that you can embed right within the dashboards. All you do is give it an API key and a camera key, and you're off and running. Um, but we have added a number of new widgets here. That's um, important. Um, you can see first we have the most recent uh, camera image that has come in. It looks about two minutes ago, 11.50 our time. And you, we can see all, uh, hopefully, not quite 28 cars, but a large number of cars that are still within the parking lot here. Um, so that's always been a, a single camera, but we've, we've recently added in the ability to play movies. So this plays the most recent movie. Um, you can see we, we started with some rain here not too long ago uh, over the last couple of days and things are starting to dry out uh, overnight. Um, actually, this is from from yesterday. So all the all the images that were received yesterday. We also have an, an image browser where you can go back in time and, and look at this. So this is really nice if you're understanding the dynamics. Maybe you have this embedded with a water level or, or total dam discharge. Um, you can click back pretty easily without having to jump to the camera application and say, okay, what's what's going on here? Uh, okay, yeah, it looks like uh, spillway was activated about you know, 15 minutes ago, and I verified it on the image. Um, you can quickly jump back to the latest, latest image there. If you have a group of cameras, which is uh, the most common usage case, you can also have kind of a, a quick widget that shows all the different uh, cameras. And then we have uh, the time lapse. So while the, the movie is always a, a day late because the processing runs overnight, uh, the time lapse gives you that view of what's going on uh, looking back over a set amount of time. So a quick automatic image time lapse that gets streamed uh, right to your browser um, for looking at that. Uh, and then looking at it, if there's a particular, uh, we also do a historic snapshot so you can see maybe how a watershed evolves over, over the years. Uh, this takes stitches together all of the images. Uh, this is over the last three years uh, that we've been we've been running this, um, so you can get a kind of a sense of how things are um, are uh, progressing. Um, and then we can also do things like cropping and rotating and, and all sorts of things like that. Um, but okay, so that's that's you know how it fits within the within widgets, and you can embed those widgets. Um, but just wanted to mention kind of towards the end here, and I will get to questions in just one minute. I'm gonna go back to that Mohawk River uh, dashboard that we have defined here. Um, but you can embed these widgets within your dashboard, right? So getting the most recent image, uh, looking at time lapses, image browsers, all that can be embedded and shown uh, right within it. And uh, critically, you can have a summary dashboard that has all of the widgets. And then uh, based on those alarms, of what's critical, we're looking at cars or people or whatever, you can, you can have an alarm widget that changes based on if it sees anything within those, just as a visual cue. Um, hey, you need to go look at your uh, one of these uh, cameras within your system is showing a car or a person or whatever it is, uh, go ahead and, and jump and investigate further. So uh, a, a lot of flexibility, and this is really uh, similar to kind of how we did widgets um, about three or four years ago, your dashboards three or four years ago. This is really where we can craft whatever your need is uh, or application is, we can craft um, alarms and um, synthetic sites and sensors or um, dashboards to meet whatever um, um, need you might have, including landing dashboards for alarms and things like that. And so with that, we have uh, a couple minutes here and uh, I'm gonna uh, look at, does this work with fisheye cameras? So uh, the a, a note about uh, compatibility with the control camera application, First off, in general, once an image is received into the platform, um, everything works exactly the same. 
so it doesn't matter about the the lens or the um, or the the focus length or anything like that. Once it's within the the software, everything works um, as as needed. Um, a, a thing about though uh, camera feeds and compatibility, uh, the the software obviously integrates with AM cameras. Uh, we can bring those in. We have a, a number of camera options between OneRain, HiSierra, and FTS um, that include integration with water level sensors, right? Sending images if the water level gets above X or sending more frequently if it gets above X. Um, but it also has the ability to work with third-party cameras. So uh, the way it works is uh, you would you would get a license and we would give you an FTP credentials. Every almost every camera on the market has the ability to send to an SFTP location or FTP location. So in that case, we would give you a specific username and password for each camera, and uh, we can start to bring in those images independent of what's hardware is out in the field. Right. So whether you've purchased hardware through us or you have been able to integrate your own. We can bring in those those images and uh, and are compatible with just about every camera on the market, including ones you can quickly purchase off of Amazon or or through a third party vendor. Uh, we also have the ability to uh, scrape publicly available images or cameras that are out on the web. So this is really critical. Um, that often comes up if you have. Maybe you're a city and the county has uh, cameras out in the field or vice versa, or if the state DOT has cameras at certain locations that you want to start to keep those in, um, instead of having to worry about um, grabbing those images all the time, you can we can scrape those images on set intervals and just go ahead and grab the images for you and bring it, bring it in um, to, the, to the software. And then we have... Um, and then we have a question about pan tilts and zoom within uh, control camera. Uh, so the first off, um, the the control camera vision uh, works on a only an image uh, because we're doing the processing uh, in the cloud. We're we're just looking at the the images that are sent to us, and control camera only uh, is able to ingest static images that are being sent to it. So. Um, the, the thinking is that this is designed for after hours when you're not w looking at it, when you're not actively, um, uh, you know, interacting with the camera and moving it around and pan, tilt, zooming. You, you don't really need object detection if you're actively looking at a camera. Um, and so that that helps um, uh, with with keeping things simple and accurate. The other the other thing um, that that this question implies um, is some of our cameras and some of the cameras on the market that are pan tilt zoom. You can have it sense, uh, you know, have a a routine where it snaps a picture of the spillway, snaps a picture of the lake, and snaps a picture of the earthen dam, and sends all three images at the same time. Uh, the software is able to take those in as well too. Uh, things like time lapses and movies obviously will look a little funny, but if you're you could set up a camera that's uh, just those different camera angles and you can do alarming on on any of those three uh, camera angles that it receives so um, while we don't have you know direct object uh, detection within a pan tilt zoom uh, video feed uh, we we do can you know we, we can integrate within the functionality and needs uh, that a pan tilt zoom provides and we can um, we can provide object detection for that which is a, a very common need right and a lot of times, you want to look at the low water crossing and look at the gates um, when you're in flooding conditions. And so we have both the hardware and the software now to, to look at all of those. And with that, I, I think that concludes our, our presentation today. We, we thank everybody for joining us. Uh, if you do have uh, questions about this, feel free to reach out to myself or the control support team. We'd be more than happy to direct you to the appropriate person to get more information about this uh, for any of this, whether it's uh, the hardware, you need help uh, looking at hardware and placement and getting advice on power and connection all the way to uh, image collection and, and uh, or if you have a problem with detecting after hour objects, um, feel free to reach out to us um, and, uh, and we'd be happy to provide um, some more information.